Hi, I'm John Capick. I'm with the Rutgers Woody Plant Breeding Program, uh, and this is our hazelnut orchard here at Rutgers Hort Farm 3 in East Brunswick. Um, this is one of our breeding fields. Uh, in these fields, we plant the plants really tightly spaced because many of them are going to die from eastern filbert blight, which is our main breeding target, is resistance for that um, in order to start a hazelnut industry in the eastern United States. So initially, we plant these plants at about three foot spacing because 50% or more will die from disease, and then we'll select down to one or 2% as potential cultivars or to advance breeding lines. These trees are going on about 12 years old. Uh, they've already been selected for disease resistance and everything that remaining has really good nut quality. Um, there's probably about 100-ish trees left in this field and probably two of them will be suitable as future cultivar releases. Hazelnuts can grow without irrigation, although we highly recommend it as supplemental. Uh, the last few years we've had really wet summers, so we haven't had to use it very often. But for example, this summer we had very little rain between the end of May and uh, mid-June. And at that time, if you can run irrigation on it, it'll really keep the trees happy and moving. Um, for this, we use orchard tubing from Rainflow Irrigation. It's a low flow drip system. You can put emitters at different, um, different spacing puts out about a gallon per emitter an hour, and it doesn't require any actual two extra additional tubes for drips. It just comes right out of an inner lining. Um, and it's very effective. You can run it off of low flow systems. You can run it off a garden hose if you need to. Um, and it's really good for any times when it, when it starts getting dry. Uh, in drier areas, you probably want to water more often, maybe once a week or so, but here we would have really only ran it probably about four weeks over the summer depending on when it got very dry. These trees have been, we pruned these up two years ago but we had already let them grow as wide bushes where in an agricultural setting you'd want to keep them to a, probably a single stem or just three to five stems just for ease of getting near the crown for ease of harvest and weed control and things like that. Um, then in areas like this you can see we had some mounds around here uh, because we layered this tree last year. So we surrounded it with tar paper, treated the stems with a rooting hormone, and then harvested a lot of layers. Um, this year we didn't harvest layers, but this is essentially what it looks like if you leave them alone. They sucker from the base or from the very low stems. So at the end of the season, right around now, once the leaves start to drop, we'll come through and we'll clean this up around the base. Um, in terms of pruning, if you were doing it every two or three weeks, you can just come over and just kind of rub them off very quickly. Once it hits about a month plus, the stems start to get a little woody at the base, and you'll need to just clip them with a you know, pair of pruners. Or you could potentially just not do them at all, and you do it like right before harvest. You do it once a year. And then that's probably the lowest labor approach, but, but the least efficient approach, depending on, you know, on, on actual just the tree's energy, what it's doing, how much you know, you're going to be cutting out a lot of. You know, you're going to have a bunch of like four or five foot tall woody stems that you'll be cutting and then just have to dispose of in whatever way. Um, so that's kind of like these had been sprayed a few times for the sucker control. Um, and now these are probably like two months old. Uh, you want to keep like them that. to a single stem for about the first three to five years and just lift the canopy up gradually to two to three feet just so you have a nice area under the tree. Then in general, you'll just have to control the suckers either through chemicals or just for by hand, hand pruning at the end of the season. Um, and then once the tree starts to get really mature and large and the canopy starts to close overhead, then every three to four years you'll go through and you'll cut out a cane or two in the middle just to let light into the upper bowl because the hazelnuts will only produce female flowers and nuts on uh, wood that's exposed to the sun. So if you never prune it, you're only gonna get nuts on the outer edge of it. And if you just go through and cut out a couple stems in the middle to really let light into that inner bowl, you'll, you'll vastly increase your nut production. So this is a nice little pile of nuts under the tree. Hazelnuts are great because you don't have to do anything in terms of picking nuts. You do obviously need to harvest them, but they will drop free from the husks. That's something we specifically breed for. Um, some of our plants will drop a few nuts in the husk, like these, and those will usually come out in the harvesting process as well. But for our cultivars and for almost all the plants we select, the nuts just fall completely out of the husk once they're ready to go. Um, wind blows them down. And then you get them into nice neat little piles like this using a backpack leaf blower or a push blower of some sort or larger equipment if you have a larger orchard. And then the harvester will take care of all of this, get all the nuts, and it'll clean out all this junk as well. 
they want 150 pounds and they're happy to pay $12 a pound, they would have paid a little more too. You know, if you're selling direct to a restaurant, that's pretty good. It's a little bit of flavor loss from freezing or from super long-term storage or something. But if you're making a product with them, it's, it's going to be hard to detect if you're eating them in chocolates or in nut butters or, you know, Nutella type things, whatever, whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah, plenty. yep. And my, I mean, my wife's made these uh, nice hazelnut cookies that are just hazelnuts, flour, butter, and a little bit of sugar. And I mean, we used nuts that were a year and a half old, and it was almost, you couldn't really tell the difference between that and the fresh ones. So this is uh, our Turkish harvester. It's the Hasatsin 2200. Um, it's from Turkey. It was a, it's a real, dis it's a real bargain. It was about 4,000 euros. Um, to purchase from the company. Uh, it's got two harvesting tubes. The tubes are can go up to about 50 feet long and still be pretty effective. Um, it's also got a husking attachment inside of it that's just kind of a drum with paddles that beats the nuts up a little bit and gets any of the husks and debris off. So it, it's got a nice cleaning stage. So the nuts that come out are pretty clean. They still need one more run through a cleaner to get rid of some of the sticks and other things that'll come through with it. But uh, it's very powerful. Um, as if the more you can condense your nuts into a little pile the faster it'll go so some of these trees have a lot of nuts under them this is our absolute last harvest of the season so there's not nearly as many nuts as there would have been a few weeks ago but we're doing one more one more pass to glean the orchard and get everything else that we can and in a commercial orchard your nuts will fall uh, closer together because you'll have less different plants where here we have every plant's a unique genotype so some of them will fall some of them were done falling three weeks ago, and some of them are still have a few nuts in the trees. Um, and the more you can pile your nuts together, the faster the harvesting stage will go. So orchard prep is sometimes more important than even harvesting. Because as you see, it, it'll suck up a large pile of nuts very quickly. You can harvest under a tree in about 30 seconds to a minute, and there could be five pounds of nuts, or there could be 20 pounds of nuts. The cleaner you can keep your floors, the better just to make it easier to access the nuts. So this tree still has a few nuts left on it. Um, and this tree is not necessarily a commercial crop, but typically the nuts will just kind of come right out when they're ready. So this one is a, a very late dropping um, tree. So these would, would come out pretty quickly. These up here, these are called catkins and they are the male flower structures for the plant. So they start developing in uh, you know mid to late June, they're very small. These are about full size now, and they'll stay like that in their dormant stage until it warms up. Um, typically in you know mid to late February to early March. And once it warms up, they'll extend to about twice their size, and the anther scales will separate and they'll start to shed pollen. The pollen, is, they're all wind pollinated, so you don't have to require any insects or anything else yourself other than just proper orchard spacing for pollen flow. Um, and that's it. Once a, they'll shed pollen for about a week or so, and then they'll be done. The, the female flowers are indistinguishable. The female buds are indistinguishable from the vegetative buds. So this could be a vegetative bud. It could be a potential female flower bud. You don't know until the actual female flower comes out. And the female flowers are very small. They only extend to maybe a few millimeters. They're a nice little purple color when you look at them up close, but you can't really see them from a distance. And all that female, all the little pistol needs is just to get a pollen grain on, and then it'll shrivel up, pollen will move down the germ tube, and eventually turn into a nut. Hi, my name is Tom Molnar, and I'm responsible for the hazelnut breeding and research program at Rutgers University. Uh, and today we're gonna we're gonna look at how we shell hazelnuts. And we'll talk a little bit about the process and, and we'll demonstrate it. So you get a chance to see how the nuts are cracked and then how they're sorted. And in the end, uh, how we come up with um, getting these nice, tasty, clean hazelnut kernels um, out of their tough shells. So I'd like to just tell you a little bit about this machine. Um, this is not a you know, a hugely commercial scale sheller. This is really sort of the small farm or very small hazelnut farm sheller. Um, this comes from a company in northern Italy uh, called Chianchia. Uh, and we're able to import, just we've been able to start importing these machines from Italy. 
Um, and it's really perfect for uh, maybe like a five to 10 acre scale hazelnut orchard. Uh, so I'm gonna step you through, there's a little bit of an art to getting it to work how you want. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that as we go. So this machine itself is both a size sorting machine and a hazelnut shelling machine. So when you harvest hazelnuts from the field, um, depending on the cultivars and the mix of cultivars, the nuts will actually be a little bit different diameters. Uh, so to use this sheller efficiently, you want to be able to sort them by size uh, and then crack only one size at a time. Uh, so we're able to actually lift out the rollers and interchange them. And we have a whole set, we have about four different rollers that are differing by one millimeter size holes. And we essentially run the crop through this machine and start with the smallest and go all the way to the largest size and sort it. So if we have a thousand pounds of nuts, in the end we'll have about five or six different size classes and that sets us up uh, for shelling. This roller that's in here, um, at this point you can see it has, has these half moon cutouts and these actually are able to grab the hazelnut shells and allow the kernels to roll through. Uh, so it's a little different than the, than the round hole size sorter. This one can actually pull out the shells and we'll, we'll demonstrate that as we go. So this is actually the, the cracker itself here. Sort of looks like an elongated sprocket. And this is turning towards a pressure plate, which you can see on the opposite side. And here's the pressure plate, which is basically just the door on the back side that you can adjust the depth of the distance between the door and that spinning gear. Uh, so the nuts get trapped and the gear is able to just spin the hazelnut and uh, find the right distance and, and shell it from that point. We wanted to mention that the company, Kionkia, that makes this machine actually makes a tabletop version. Now you'll be missing out on the shelling, so it's just going to crack the nuts and dump them into a pile or into a, a bowl or a bin. Um, but basically the same mechanism can be freestanding and sit on a table uh, with a very similar sized apparatus here, uh, and you can shell your hazelnuts on an even smaller scale. Um, but then of course the challenge is taking the shells from the kernels and, and doing that. Um, and that's why this sort of ingenious simple tube here does such a, such a great job for us um, because we're able to remove probably 95 to 98% of the, the shells from the kernels. So as part of our operation uh, from harvesting, you did get a chance to see the harvesting machine. Um, that vacuums up a lot of in addition to hazelnuts, little stones, twigs, and other debris. Uh, so what we then do next is we take that basically field run hazelnut and all the debris, and we run it through this machine here, which then through a number of air blowers, essentially, and some in, in a paddle here machine, or a paddle apparatus, it actually lifts off the light material, blows it out. Uh, the stones come out the bottom so the heavy material doesn't get up into the machine. And then any broken shells or twigs get pushed out here. And then also in the final stage, it's able to throw the hazelnuts up into an air column and separate out the blanks, which would be shells with no kernels versus the filled hazelnuts. So once it comes out the end here in this machine, uh, it's very clean and it's basically ready to go into the sheller uh, besides for size sorting. So this is sort of the intermediate step uh, between the field uh, and then the side sorting. Uh, but it does a great job of removing sticks and stones and then like I said, the, those blank hazelnut shells. So this machine does a really good job of re removing the shells, but it's not perfect. Uh, so you will see that there's still a few shell pieces that need to be removed and 
like any agricultural crop, you'll find ones that maybe an insect has fed on or are defective. Maybe they're shriveled, the tree didn't get enough moisture. Um, so before these go out and be roasted or consumed in any way, we have to do a quality sorting to remove the shells and any defective kernels. So at this point, we're, we're doing the, the quality sorting and it's a little bit, in our setup here, it's a little bit of a tedious job. Uh, I envision on like a commercial scale, it would be done differently uh, with the moving sorting table, uh, but we just process small batches. Um, so what I have set up here are just some bins where I can shake it to spread out the nuts so I can look at them closely. And then I just quickly go through and first run and pick out any obvious shell pieces. And then if I see any shriveled kernels or moldy kernels, uh, we want to make sure that no end consumer gets these sort of rotten hazelnuts. Uh, so we'll go through and carefully uh, kind of discard any of the poor quality kernels. And uh, once you've done it for a long time, you start to get, get a good eye for how to do it. Um, we do have a few insects like the brown marmorated stink bug that does feed on hazelnuts. And since we don't really spray for these insects, we will see some kernels that are pockmarked and we know that's from, from the stink bugs. But it's a small percentage, it's less than 10%, maybe it's only about 5%, um, so that's uh, you know, very good. Most of what will happen with these kernels is they will be dry roasted uh, before they're used in making any, any food items or just eaten directly. Um, and what we recommend, and this is probably one of my favorite things to do with the hazelnuts, uh, is basically put them on a cookie sheet on a single layer in the oven uh, at about 325 degrees, maybe up to 350 depending on your oven, and then roast them for about 10 to 15 minutes, um, depending on your preferences. Do you like a darker roasted kernel or a lighter roasted kernel? Lighter roasted kernel. Um, and you'll actually see then at that point that the skin starts to pop off of the hazelnuts. Um, and then also, of course, your kitchen will be filled with, filled with that special hazelnut roasting aroma, which is probably one of my favorite things. Um, but that, uh, that point allows that fibrous skin to peel off. Um, so what we then recommend is let those kernels cool, come to room temperature, and then using uh, your hands or a cloth, a terry cloth, like a towel, rub the kernels and remove as much as that, of that skin as you can. Um, and then you'll be left with mostly uh, pure white kernels uh, with, without the, the somewhat bit, bitter fibers on the outside, um, like you can see with these split kernels here. Um, and then they're ready for, as my kids like it, just eating directly once they're cool uh, or using in any products or making your, your hazelnut butters. Um, and of course that roasting process is part of that uh, sort of food safety process where that's essentially sterilizing those kernels. You bring them up to that high temperature uh, and then they're ready to eat. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh.